namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambodassa namo tassa bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodhasa. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. <coughs> Last week we talk about wrong view, na? Wrong view. Wrong view is very, very wide, very wide to number me first level. Uh, incorrect, incorrect view about Hosan and Anhosan did. If you are thinking uh, Hosan did as Anhosan, that is a wrong view. If you are thinking Anhosan did, as a whole sign, uh, it is a wrong view. Then number two, uh, incorrect, incorrect view about the root of whole sign and the root of a whole sign. And number three, and uh, number three, incorrect view about four noble truth, four noble truth. So if you know um, three type, I think more than enough. So this is a analysis, uh, analysis of wrong view uh, done by Venerable Sariputta. In summary, this soda. Another one is the incorrect view about Patecha Samopara. Actually, Patecha Samopara is just a part of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, it is uh, Second Noble Truth and the Third Noble Truth. Okay, so today uh, I want to analyze um, date T in two levels. Uh, number one, wrong view in moral level. Wrong view in moral level. It is nothing but uh, number one and number two in earlier slide, right? Number, number one and two. Uh, in moral level, so that means if you are thinking uh, Hosan did as an uh, Hosan is moral level, right? Killing is good, killing civilian or innocent people is good. So that is a wrong view. Like that, so in in the moral wrong view in moral level, right? And number in number two level, a wrong view in doctrine level, doctrine level. This this one is higher, this one is higher. In, such as the a belief in permanent entity or everlasting entity, like a soul theory, right? If you think that there is something permanent something in your body, in your mind, which is permanent, everlasting, like a soul theory, right? Most of the religion, they accept that there is a soul inside their body or outside of their body, like that. Actually, you may have talk that uh, some people say there is a uh, universal soul outside of your body, right? So there are some people, now it's quite popular, I think, right? So there is a universal soul, people can connect to that universal soul. So by using so many, so many things like a uh, meditation music, and also listening to uh, 
the sound not uh, ring in the uh, ring in the bowl like that, ring in the bed. There is uh, so there are so many theory. According to Buddhism, there is no everlasting thing or everlasting entity inside and outside. Inside and outside. So here, uh, in doctrinal level, of course, it's doctrinal level. And also, this is a non uh, so theory. So theory. And also, um, if you think suffering as a pleasant happiness, this is also a wrong view. Doctrine 11. If you think you are safe, I am beautiful. There's also a wrong view in doctrine 11. <laughs> if you see that somebody beautiful, this is, we call it Sanya Vipanlasa, illusion, you know. You see, Sanya uh, Vipanlasa means wrong perception, you no? Know? Wrong perception. Because of that, you have a wrong view that somebody is beautiful, or somebody is handsome. So if you analyze this body into 32 parts, Nothing is beautiful, nothing is handsome. So that is the truth, that is the truth. So indoctrinate level is very high, right? So even the Buddhists, we have this wrong view. You know? Even Sotapanna still have this wrong view. Sotapanna still see, you know, his body stay beautiful. So here, if you have a wrong view in moral level, uh, it can lead to a good rebirth. Wrong view in moral level can only lead to a, a, bad, a bad destination, a bad, rebirth, a bad rebirth. So based on wrong view, you may have, you may have, you, you will do unwholesome things, right? Thinking that it is good, it is good. Killing is good. Even now in the world, right? It's happening everywhere. Really terrible, right? Terrible. People are killing them each other. So it is based on the wrong view. Based on the wrong view. So by doing a whole something, and they will lead to a bad destination, a bad rebirth. Wrong view in doctrinal labor will prevent one, will prevent one from seeing the truth, seeing the truth. And if you cannot see the truth, you, you cannot attain Nepal. You cannot experience the bliss of Nepal. In that way, it will cause a practitioner. So here we use the word practitioner because it's higher level, you know, practitioner, even the Buddhists. So we're tied in the circle of suffering, circle of existence, or sansara. We call it sansara, right? Sansara. So normally we have a theory of soul or theory of self. We see suffering as a happiness. We see disgusting thing as a pleasant thing, like, like that. So this is a, a wrong view, a doctrinal level, doctrinal level. So now we'll talk about uh, in detail. So regarding with the wrong view in moral level, <clears throat> in other words, we can call it gamma level. So in in many many sodas, uh, they mention the same way, you know, the same the same formula. 
176. Those who want to become a teacher, those who want to become a teacher, so you should take note, so the numbers, and you can read, eh? because the, so in that way you can, you will know, you know, on the, the original source, original sources. Those who don't want to become a teacher, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a round view in more level or camera level. He holds round view and has incorrect perspective tests. Actually, these are just examples. Normally, there are so many type of round view. So the Buddha mentioned some of the examples. There is nothing given, nothing sacrificed, and nothing offered. Actually, these three words uh, indicate uh, similar meaning, similar meaning. It's saying that there is no the fruit of giving. If you give somebody, there's no fruit, no benefit. <clears throat> if you sacrifice and if you offer, there's no fruit, no benefit. So you deny the benefit of giving, offering, and sacrifice. So this is a wrong view. This is a wrong view. So actually, if you have a right, right view in your mind and right understanding in your mind, you know, you know, there are the fruit and benefit of giving, right? I have a two, uh, I want to compare uh, two of my grandfathers, grandfathers. So one is generous, one is generous. So when I go there, he normally give uh, pocket money, oh, pocket money, right? To buy, to buy the money, pocket money. So I like to go there. <laughs> I left. My grandpa, that grandpa. Another one, no. Never gave, and also he always asked me to massage. <laughs> I don't want to go, you know. So, you know, simple example, right? Simple example. If we have a common sense, we can understand. So, here, giving or offering doesn't mean just uh, giving and offering to the monasteries, to the temple, to the monks, and no. It can be anyone, even to animates, right? So, giving the food to anime, feeding anime is also a kind of giving, right? Okay, so another one is, there is no fruit or result of good and bad actions. If you are, do, if you are doing good, there's no fruit, no benefit, no good result. So this is also wrong view, no? wrong view. <clears throat> if you are doing unwholesome things, akusala gamma, so there will be, uh, uh, there'll be no fruit and no consequences. So it's very dangerous. If you have a, this type of wrong view, then you will do, right? You will do unwholesome things. Sometimes, sometimes religion is very dangerous, no? Dangerous. Because of religion, there are so many war, right? Fighting in the war. Jerusalem, Jerusalem is um, the public, the, the public saw two great religion, right? Two great religions in the war. And three great religions, they uh, uh, they pay too much devotion to that place, Jerusalem. Because of that, there's so many fighting, right? And the history is even right now. Very dangerous, very dangerous. 
So therefore, the Buddha said that uh, even to the Dharma, even to his teachings, we don't have to have attachment to, to it. The Dharma taught by the Buddha is to overcome uh, suffering, our problem, you know, those who are practicing it. So the Dharma is, the purpose of the Dharma is to overcome our suffering, our problem, right? Somebody criticized teachings of the Buddha, somebody criticized the Buddha and also Sangha, if you get angry, no, you're not following teachings of the Buddha. In uh, Brahmajala Soda, the Buddha clearly said that somebody who criticized and condemned the triple gym, you don't have to be angry. You have to respond. You have to reply without any anger, without any anger. So the Buddha have given a guideline in Brahmajala Soda, the first Soda in Diganikai. So as a Buddhist, so therefore I think uh, as a Buddhist, uh, uh, there's not, not much uh, less fighting, I would say that, you know, because of that. So there's no fighting regarding with uh, Buddhism, right? Buddhism. But of course there are few, right? There are few. In ancient time, uh, so they, they fight for Buddhism, of course. They are some. In the 11th century, uh, I think late 10th century, uh, Sri Lanka was occupied by Hindu kingdoms, southern India, from southern India. And the king from Sri Lanka uh, taught to write a letter to the Burmese king so to to fight uh, how to say we to call it uh, people from other religion they want to remove Hinduism Hindu king from Sri Lanka and Burmese king sent a big army a large army and fight for Buddhism you know fight for Buddhism like that so there may be such such fighting such a fighting, but uh, so the Buddha have given the guideline not to have attachment even to the Dharma, let alone Buddhism, we call it Buddhism. Buddhism is teachings of the Buddha, right? Buddhism is teachings of the Buddha. So we can, of course, we have to take actions, right? We have to take actions if uh, other country occupying Buddhist country, of course we can defend, we can defend. But there is no way to invade other country in the name of Buddhism. It's not good. Okay, so, so here, if you think there is no fruit and result of good and bad action, that's a wrong view. Another one is, there is no this world and no other world. It talk about there's no afterlife. Uh, no afterlife as well as the previous life, you know. So denial of, uh, denial of um, uh, previous life and afterlife, afterlife. There's no this world and no other world. Another one is there's no mother and no father. Actually, this is a literal translation. Uh, Nati mata, nati peta. So that me, so there are no good and bad result of treating mother or father nicely or badly. You don't acknowledge you know, the gratitude of parents. You don't acknowledge. So they get married, they give up children, 
That is their duty. So they have to educate and they have to keep uh, inheritance uh, for you as a parents. There's no gratitude like that. It's a wrong view, right? It's a wrong view. So there are no beings spontaneously reborn. Spontaneously reborn. So you don't believe uh, heavenly existence because uh, uh, when, when somebody died and they were was born in heaven spontaneously. You don't need to go to mother's womb. Huh? So you don't believe uh, existence or ghost, right? Normally, when you have too much attachment to your family, houses, the places, uh, then because of that, you were was born as a ghost, especially around your house, you know, of course. So therefore, it is important as a uh, senior citizen, it is important to take note that when you are going to die, let go of everything. Don't tie, you know, so much. The more you let go, the more you will suffer, right? So therefore, no attachment to the family, to the house, you let go the moment you are going to die. You, know? then you, you have a good repart. Otherwise, if you have too much attachment and craving, then you are always from most, uh, generally you are always from as a, as a cause or beta, beta. But here, you don't believe existence or spontaneous, spontaneous rebirth, like a Petas, like a Brahma, like a, uh, the Devas, like the Devas. So these are the wrong view. In Buddhism, in current in um, contemporary Buddhism, we have a um, we have a um, secular Buddhism. We have a secular Buddhism, right? Of course, they practice teachings of the Buddha. They accept four noble truths, the noble four paths, dependent origination, good deed and bad deed, and four divine dwelling, Brahma Vihara. They accept it and they practice. But they have difficulty to believe past life, after life. We call it uh, secular Buddhist, secular Buddhism. It is well known in the West. In the West, so for them, especially Westerners, even in Asia, right, some people may have a difficulty to accept past life and after life. So, but they accept teachings of the Buddha, like a four noble truth, etc. They know akusala and kusala. <clears throat> but they, <laughs> they don't believe, you know. They don't believe after life and past life. So that's also a wrong view, you know. That's also a wrong view. I think I have, I have shared the, a, about debate between uh, Ajahn Brahma Lee, Stephen, Stephen Batchelor. You know? I, have, I have shared, right? Yeah, I think you attended so many courses. <laughs> Anyone who a debate between Stephen Bachelor and Ajahn Brahmali? Very interesting. Very interesting. So Stephen Bachelor is the uh, I think I will say that is the one of the famous uh, writer from England and, and supporter of secular Buddhism. He called himself a secular Buddhist. Uh, he don't say, he doesn't say that uh, he don't believe past life and after life, but he, he is agnostic, you know. That means he has a difficulty to accept it. The Ajahn Brahmali in the debate said that if you don't accept past life and after life, you are not Buddhist. <laughs> you are not a Buddhist. <laughs> Actually, um, in that debate, uh, Ajahn Brahma Lee 
from Australia. I think many of you know that. Uh, Ajahn Brahmali, he's an expert in the Pali Canon, and he gave some uh, reason, the reason why uh, we should believe uh, past life and after life. <clears throat> because when, uh, so there are so many sotas that talk about uh, attaining enlightenment or the Prince Siddhartha, uh, how the Buddha became the Buddha. <clears throat> In those sotas, the Buddha clearly said that <clears throat> after attaining Fujana, uh, he inclined his mind to know, to recollect his previous life. So many previous life, his own previous life. And then he entered the fourth jhana again. Then he imag uh, imagined from the fourth jhana, he inclined his mind to recollect and to know the life of other beings. How they die, how they were born, the new existence. Why they are ugly, why they are beautiful. When they are rich, when they are poor, like that. Cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. So, because of that, uh, if you don't believe uh, past life and after life, you're not a Buddhist, he said. <laughs> of course, this is a right? wrong view. This is a wrong view. <clears throat> then, they are in the war. No ascetics and Brahmins, simply religious leaders. So no religious leader or right contact and right practice who have been realized this war and other war. For them say, by indirect knowledge, make them known to others. So you don't believe if you don't believe um, that they are religious leader who know this war and other war, who know the heavenly realms, Brahma realms, and uh, awful planes, <clears throat> and made known to others. This is also a kind of right view. Sorry, a kind of wrong, wrong view, kind of wrong view. Okay, this is a, uh, typical, a typical expressions uh, that talk about a wrong view in more level in the Pali Canon, in the Pali Canon. So, any question? So this is a, uh, the line from the Pali Canon. Any question? Okay, no question. Then I want to quote again, Taita uh, Yadana Sota. Uh, actually, I have already explained in earlier chapter, earlier chapter, so this will be the second time. I quote this because it's important for Buddhists. <clears throat> so we have a three satirian tinas, satirian tinas, the Buddha said, the Buddha said in Taitayarana Sota. So that means uh, there are major and popular wrong views uh, in every religion. Number one, uh, Bhobhikatahetu, commit determination, commit determination. Your, your karma, your karma is determined that you will, you will encounter this, surely. You know? This is a determinism, determinism. If you think that after doing something, some unwholesome action, if you say you will encounter exactly the same thing, you know? So that means if you kill somebody, you'll be killed. This is a determinism. So this is also wrong view, it's a wrong view. Not like that, not like that. <clears throat> so here, commit determinism, Popekata here to everything one experiences, pleasant, painful, or neutral, is due to the best karma, best karma only, due to the best karma only. 
That is how one has acted in the past. In the past. So people normally say that if you if you are blame quite often, people normally say, "Oh, this is my past karma. I may have blame other people, you know, like that." It is commit determinism. Commit determinism. So if you encounter pleasant things right now, if you think that it is just because of my past karma only, so that is a wrong view. That's a wrong view. Singapore is rich because of past karma. Wrong view, you know. It's also wrong view. Singapore became rich not because of, not just because of past karma also may play an important role, but present karma, right? You make a lot of effort. You make a lot of effort to become a big, a rich country. You know? So that only became a right view. So here, if you contribute. Uh, if you attribute just past karma, this is a wrong view. Whether pleasant thing happen in your life, or unpleasant thing happen in your life, or neutral thing happen in your life, if you think it is because of past karma, then that is a wrong view. Just because of past karma, this is a wrong view. So there are so many factors, right? Uh, so many factors to become something. Not just because of past camp. <clears throat> Suppose you have uh, cancer. Suppose cancer, or you have a diabetes. Not good, right? Not good. If you say it is because of my past karma, wrong view, <laughs> right? Cancer happen. There are so many factors, right? But karma may play an important role. Some people, when they were born, right, they got uh, they got diabetes, right? Inborn diabetes, right? I don't know how to call it in English. Um, some people they got diabetes when uh, from their gene, you know, genetic inherit. So they are inherited, inherited. Some people have a um, uh, so cancer gene, right? They have a cancer gene from their parents, like that. Of course, it's a bad karma, but not everything, right? Not everything. So when you have this wrong view, commit determinism, uh, you will have in antipathy and in antipathy or fatalism. What can I do? It is my best karma. <laughs> what can I do? It is my best karma, right? Then if you lost your job, oh, what can I do? This is my best karma. Wrong view, you know? This is a wrong view. So there are so many factors that you, lo you, get, uh, you lost your job, right? You lost your job, so if you you have to examine why you you lost this job, so there will be so many reasons, right? So many reasons. So this is also one of the wrong view. Another one is theistic determinism. This is a popular popular wrong view. Theistic determinism. God, not only God, God, God has any anything. God knows and controls everything, and thus has determined everything before it has happened. So there will be fighting between Israel and Palestine. It's a wrong view, you know. If you think it is determined, wrong view. So God knows and controls everything. You cannot change it. That is determinism. Determinism. Goddesses. Actually, it's really Chinese. You believe goddesses, right? Goddesses. 
God does that create your good and bad karma? If you believe so, that is a theistic determination. So according to Buddhism, there's no creator God. You are, you create your own destiny, right? If you want to become rich, you can create it. If you want to become poor, then you can create it, right? We are all create our own destiny, our own destiny. But if you think that there is somebody created your karma, that is a wrong view. This determinism. Then, if you have this wrong view, then you will have a responsibility. Don't blame me. It is the will of God. <laughs> It is the will of God. Don't blame me. No. Don't blame you know, Hamas or don't blame Israel, Israeli government. No. It is the will of God. It's a wrong view, you know. It's a wrong view. So it will create a responsibility, a responsibility. So this one is the, the most popular wrong view in the world, right? If you believe there is a creator God or creator goddesses, some people believe uh, universal energy, you know, created something for you, you know. Or oh, this was a wrong view, you know. Maybe this did really uh, determination, right? Many people believe that uh, planets, stars, sun, moon control human being. <laughs> That's a wrong view, right? That's a wrong view. So the last one is a non-causality. Things happen without any cause and conditions. So wherever this passing experience, whether pleasure, pleasant, painful, neither painful nor pleasant, or that occurs without any cause, without any condition. Things happen in your life without any cause. That's a wrong view. You got cancer, you got diabetes without any reason, without any condition. They have been, it happened by chance, right? By coincidence like that. So that is a kind of wrong view, non-causality. Every, everything has its own cause and conditions, cause and conditions. So therefore we have a dependent origination, right? So dependent on this, that happened. You are suffering, you are sorrow, you have a sorrow, lamentation in your mind, that is the cause, right? That is the cause. Okay, so these are the uh, three satirian T net, and other one, three popular wrong view uh, according to Bolazin. According to Bolazin. Okay, any question? Okay, no question right there. Huh? Now I will talk about wrong view in doctrine eleven. Doctrine eleven. So I'm going to start with the soul theory. Believing in everlasting entity, then I went, number one is the soul or self. If you believe there is a permanent soul, everlasting soul, inside your body or outside of your body, that is the wrong view. That's the wrong view. If you believe there is universal soul that control uh, destiny of human beings, also wrong view. That's wrong view. <coughs> Another one is identity view, Sakadati. Normally, Buddhists may not have number one, but surely you have number two. Normally, we have. Only you become sort of pana, you can remove number two. We call it identity view. You identify five aggregate. In other words, 
you identify your mind and body, mind and body, as I. I am talking. I am listening. You, you are listening like that. Men, women, temple, country, etc. So actually, normally there's no I according to Buddhism. There's no you according to Buddhism. There's no temple according to Buddhism. <coughs> Simply, there's only two, you know? mental and physical phenomena. Mental phenomena, we call it mind, you know? mind. And physical phenomena, simply we call it the body, body. It is combination of mind and body. So therefore, the Buddha taught to analyze five aggregate, right? The Buddha trying to analyze our body in terms of five aggregate. Sometimes six sins species. Sometimes namarupa, right? Namarupa. So here, if you cannot analyze in terms of namarupa, in terms of five aggregate, in terms of six sins species, in terms of eighty elements, etc. You have it this wrong view, identity view. You identify, this is me. Like that. Of course, conventionally we can talk. This is my father, this is my mother, right? Conventionally you can talk. But doctrinally you cannot. There's no mother, no father. They are just the aggregate of my and body, right? My and body. So that is a doctrine perspective, doctrine living. And we also have <coughs> eternity view, sasata deity, eternity view. If you think that pleasant thing in your life will last forever. That is eternity view. Unpleasant thing in your life will last forever. That's eternity view. <clears throat> if you think that your body will last forever, eternity view. If you think your mind will last forever without any changes, that will be eternity view, wrong view, wrong view. Normally within that yesterday mind and today mind the same, you know? Yesterday your body and today your body the same. Normally we have this this kind of thinking, right? Eternity view. Actually uh, our body is changing constantly, right? Or constantly changing. Our mind is changing constantly. So then only if you if you can if you know in such a way, that will be a right view. Normally, we have this type of eternity view most of the time, right? Most of the time. Another one is annihilation view, annihilation view, ochera deity, annihilation view. Annihilation view. Normally, uh, when you encounter unpleasant thing in your life, in your life, then you have normally uh, a type of thinking. Uh, it will stop. It will stop annihilation because then that you experience not good normally. If you um, if you have thinking of this way, stop, stop. That's the annihilation view. So actually, these two talk about uh, come from you know these two come from uh, lack of understanding uh, the nature of impermanence. If you don't believe arising, arising, then you have a wrong view about annihilation. If you think, if you just think cessation then you will remember about eternity view, eternity view. Normally, uh, the truth is your mind 
your body, good thing and bad thing in your life arises and passes away. Two, two, you know, two important character. Your body arises and also subject to cessation. Your mind arises subject to cessation. Everything is like that. Your problem arises subject to cessation. So therefore, we have to look at two sets, two sets of the truth, arising and passing away. So everything is, everything is not permanent. Uh, everything is, how to say, yeah, of course, everything is not permanent, no? whether they are pleasant or unpleasant. Then seeing a nature as a nature, permanence. So everything is a nature or impermanent, changing all the time, right? So if you think it is permanent, then that's a doctrinal wrong view, you know, doctrinal level, wrong view. Seeing toka as a sukha, pleasure. In the higher level, in the, when you look at the Nibbana point of view, every uh, how do you say feeling, any type of feeling, whether pleasant or unpleasant or neutral, is suffering because um, they are subject to impermanent. Subject to impermanent. You take a trip. Uh, you take a trip to Hawaii. Suppose Hawaii. You enjoy it, right? You enjoy it. It's pleasant. You you think that it is pleasant, right? It's pleasant. But when you look at Torah view, it is also suffering, you know, because subject to subject to cease, subject to stop. You have to come back, right? But stay in ten ten days, then you come back and walk again, right? So the subject to impermanence. So therefore, it is suffering. And seeing a nata as a atta. <clears throat> if you think if you think that there is a soul, permanent soul, permanent self, which is everlasting, also doctrinal wrong view. And seeing a super as a super. This body is unpleasant and ugly, but if you think that it is beautiful, handsome, also wrong view in doctrinal level. Doctrinal level. Of course, normal level, uh, of course we can see. The Buddha also say, right? The Buddha also say that. So these are the wrong view in doctrinal level. Any question regarding with this? Okay, no question. Today is strange. <laughs> okay. Oh, because some of them I have already talked about it, right? Maybe because of that. The root of all eBay in the Bodhisattva in Inkotra Nikaya, because I do not see even a single thing on account of which an arisen and wholesome quality arise. Arisen and wholesome quality increase. And I spend so much as wrong view. Wrong view is the root of all evil. The root of all evil. So when you have a wrong view, then uh, you will do that. There will be a lot of uh, unwholesome consequences, right? Consequences. The root of all evil. So based on religion, so we have a lot of fighting in the world, the root of all evil. Um, so one of the scientists from England, um, um, he made a documentary, the root of all evil. So he he is atheist, you know. He blame normally he blame the religions. <laughs> 
because of religion, you know, there are a lot of evil, suicide bombing, etc., you know, fighting, crusades. So when you Google the root of all evil, then you will see. Uh, talking, his name is he. Uh, I, I forgot his name. He also write a book called Delusion. God delusion. Delusion means moha, right? You, you know, uh, how to say, you believe somebody created your destiny. Somebody created your life. That is because of delusion, according to him. No? God delusion. It's very, I think it's one of the famous books. He's atheist. You know? <laughs> That's why he promotes uh, he condemned you know, religion. Okay. Uh, in the West, very liberal, so they can criticize you know, any religion. <laughs> but Singapore is very uh, sensitive, you know, sensitive. Okay, any question uh, regarding with the wrong view? Okay, no question. Then I will go to another Chittasika. We call it Kansit, Mana. So this one also a very, uh, a very good, a very good thing to uh, state of mind. You know, you see, one of the popular, uh, popular topic in psychology and psychology, can sit mana. So actually, last week I talk about this, right? When you can remove forty akusala chidasika you attain Nibbana, <laughs> right? So the Anghosan Chirisika will create hot sensation in your mind, create a lot of problem in your life. When you can remove the degree of Anghosan Chirisika, then your life becomes peaceful and cool, cool. So mana create a lot of problem in our life. Mana is popularly translated as a conceit, and Begu body also translated as a conceit. The definition of mana is shown in the sense of superiority complex, superiority complex in the facts Abhidhamma text, Dhamma Singhani, comparing a simile of flag waving in the air. A flag waving in the air look like arrogant. Some people are arrogant and they become considered, right? Arrogant, arrogant manner. They think that they are superior, superior. In psychology, Western psychology, they say Superiority complex. So this is a so one of the complex and state of mind that create a lot of problem in our life. In our life. So mana is translated as a can see it in the sense of superiority complex. So therefore, many Abhidharma writers, including English translator, like a big body, they follow suit. They follow the definition of uh, the first Abhidhamma text, the first Abhidhamma text. Actually, mana literally means comparison. Mana literally means comparing, comparing. So we can call it comparing mind, mana. It is a comparing mind. So I will use egocentric comparison. Egocentric comparison. Based on ego, you compare with other people. Mana associated with chaita rooted in greed. Loba, another one equal. You, 
you have a law about your life, about your status, right? About your background. Based on that egocentric mind, you compare with other people. That's called man. It's called man. It is a comparison or comparing between oneself and others based on ego or based on loba. Simply, I think better use the word loba. Loba. In terms of status, I am higher. As, actually, as, as a monk, we have a, this mana, you know, egocentric comparison. You shouldn't treat me like this because I'm a Buddhist monk. I'm higher like that. That's a type of mana, you know. Shouldn't compare in such a way. Then arrogant mana may arise. May arise. Possession. Possession. Normally, people who are higher, they have fancy in their mind. I am higher in possession. Don't talk to me like this. So here, comparing me, whether you are, your status is higher or lower, you compare, you know? You compare with other people. Regarding with the wealth, poor people also, they compare rich people based on their ego. ego. Then when they see rich people, then poor people, they have a uh, how to say, inferior mind, right? Inferior mind. Oh, compared to them, then I'm poor. Then they have an inferiority complex in their mind. So when you compare your house and the house or your neighbors, if you compare based on ego or loba, then that is mine. That's mine. My how is better. So, based on attachment to your house, my how is better than your house. Then, superiority complex arise. Because of that, you will have a lot of problem with the neighbor. You know, neighbor. Then then that na your neighbor become very rich and they will big, a better house and bigger house. How you will feel it? You will feel, you know, uh, inferior to, to them. You will have a lot of problem in your, in your mind, you know? Because of mana, you have a lot of problem. Oh, their heart is bigger than me, you know? Earlier, your heart is bigger and better superiority complex, right? Because of that, you became arrogant to them. And they try hard, and they become rich, and they build a better house and bigger house. Then when you see bigger house and better house, then you feel you know, inferior to them. Inferi inferiority complex will arise. So you don't have any uh, uh, drawings in your mind. You cannot acknowledge that they are richer. You cannot congratulate their success, right? So that is it because of comparing mind, mana. Knowledge and beauty. So normally, some people may have a jealousy after seeing somebody, right? Wow, she is more beautiful than me. Jealousy arises because of this mind, comparing mind. It's very, very dangerous, right? So when you see ugly people that you compare, uh, oh, they are ugly. I am beautiful, right? The comparing mind where, right? Based on your ego, right? Ego me lower to yourself, to your beauty that you compare. So they are ugly. I am the most beautiful girl in, 
in the uh, in this place like that, right? Arrogant manner will arise. So if you are reacting with the arrogance or conceit or superiority complex, then people will hate you, right? You have a lot of social issues, relationship issues. So therefore, uh, comparing mind is very uh, dangerous. So here, mana literally means comparing. You compare based on law, bar, according to Bidama. Of course, we can use the word ego, right? Ego. So I think you have to look at the word comparing based on ego or law. Bar. So normally I use the word egocentric comparison. Egocentric comparison. But sometimes we need to compare our life and the life of other people, right? If you compare with other people without ego or without love, just based on wisdom or understanding, mindfulness, just based on mindfulness, just based on sympathy, just based on compassion, it is not mana. It is important. Every comparing mind is not bad, not bad. You can compare with other people based on wisdom, understanding, mindfulness, sympathy, compassion. A few years back, uh, I met, um, I heard uh, one Singaporean mother said that he normally sent his children to poor country, to poor country, to appreciate their life in Singapore. Singapore. Normally, the children in Singapore, they forget to acknowledge or, how do you say, they forgot to uh, acknowledge their life in Singapore. Easy life and better life. But when they go to poor country, they can compare with the poor, you know, uh, the status in, uh, the status of the children in those country. And when they come back, and they can acknowledge the life in Singapore. The Singaporean mother, she asked her children to go to poor country to compare, not based on law, but based on understanding, based on wisdom, and based on sympathy. So actually, she himself normally went to poor country and do uh, charity, charity. So she asked her children to join with her so that uh, her children know the life of the children <coughs> the life of young people in those countries. So in that way, so they, uh, how do you say, they value the life in Singapore. So in this case, in this case, uh, the minor Singaporean mother, of course she compare, right? She compare the life in Singapore, the life in poor country, based on understanding based on mindfulness, based on sympathy, compassion. She has compassion because of that she do a lot of chari charitable works in those countries. So comparing with the wisdom is not a mana. That's very important, right? Sometimes we need to compare with uh, ourselves and other people, right? But be mindful. But with the understanding, sympathy, compassion, right? So therefore, in the sotas, uh, mana is list in three types. In three types. Number one, superiority complex. We call it siya mana in, in, in Pali. Sorry that if I cannot pronounce, it's very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> superiority complex, right? So, so that means you compare with other people based on lower 
I am higher. I am richer. I am more knowledgeable than you, like that, right? Don't talk to me. I know everything. <laughs> Superiorly complex, right? Normally, parents, they have this, this type of comparing mind. <laughs> you are still young. Don't talk to me like this. <laughs> Superiorly complex, right? The another one is equality complex. Equality complex. Don't treat me like this. Your status and I equal, you know, equal status, you know. So based on your uh, law bar, you're trying to compare with somebody else, you know. Don't talk to me like that. You are a mank. I am also a mank. <laughs> Equality complex, right? Equality complex. So they also create a lot of, lot of problems, right? The same classroom, uh, the student may have this equality complex, equality complex. Sri <clears throat> Samana. Another one is inferiority, inferiority complex, Hinamana. So this one also a type of mana. If you compare with somebody based on your love, attachment, attachment to your status, Normally, it happens, you know, to many people. Ugly people may have inferiority complex. Compared to them, I'm ugly. Then uh, you have a stress in your mind. You have a, uh, uh, how can I say, inferior, inferior concept in your mind. And you cannot... You cannot go to, uh, how to say, uh, superior people like that, right? Inferior complex. And poor people also may have a inferior complex most of the time, right? Most of the, some of the time. So you dare not to associate with rich people like that. So when you see rich people, rich neighbor, rich friends, you have a kind of inferior mind in your mind, right? So I am poor compared to my friend. So because of that, uh, you have a lot of uh, relationship, uh, relationship barrier, right? A lot, of, a lot of problem in your relationship, inferiority complex. So in psychology, in psychology, they have only two, only two, superiority complex and an inferiority complex. So they don't have a number two, number, number two. Equality complex, actually this is my, <laughs> my, my translation. You know? Equality complex. You know? Negative aspect of comparison, comparison based on ego or based on lava, is unwholesome in the state. Unwholesome in the state. If you compare with the wisdom, understanding, compassion, that is not a mana, right? That's not a mana. That's very important to understand. So when you compare with other people, you have to look at your mind. Whether you are comparing with the lover or based on ego or not. So if you compare, people know it. And even though they cannot talk to you and they don't like you, right? So the best, is, the best example is you compare with the neighbor, right? Neighbor. So because of this complex, you know superiority or inferiority complex, then it creates a lot of problem in our life. You cannot congratulate the success of other people, right? You have a jealousy even to your a good friend, good friend. Because of this, man, you compare, right, with your friend. 
based on law. Uh, I want to explain, uh, I want to compare Buddhist um, comparing mind and comparing mind in uh, Western psychology. They use the word superiority complex. So this is a uh, inferiority complex. So this is a popular one, popular one. Okay, any question today? Maybe next week. Oh, next week, I, we will not whether we are closing or open next week because we will exam, right? We will exam next week. Definitely, we don't have a class in this room. I will discuss whether uh, we, we want to do online. If there's no, how do say, do you, do you want to do online? Yes, no. <laughs> because it's okay, right? Because uh, here uh, we, we are relaxed, right? Yeah. Just to understand the teachings of the Buddha, right? Main thing is to know the teachings of the Buddha, right? Even here, normally uh, in this book, Bhikkhu Bodhi explain just a little bit, <laughs> right? So if you just learn from this book, you will not get so much. So now, regarding with the mana, comparing mind, so we learn a lot. It's good to apply in our, in our daily life, right? Okay, any question? Uh, any question up to now? One question? <laughs> no question. Okay, let's call it a day. Yo varatam bavaro manu jesu Sakyamuni Bhagavakata Gecho Bhagato Bala Viriya Samangi Tansukatan Saranatamu Pemi Ragavi Ragamaninjama Sokan Dhamma Masangatama Patikulan Maruda Mimampagunan Suvipatan Dhamma mi man saranatamu pe mi Yatta cha de nama hapalama hu Chattu su su si su puri sayu gesu Atacha Pogala Tamada Sati Sangami Mansara Natamu Pemi Satu Satu Satu. Okay, thank you.